Hi, this is David Abanek Turtle with a review of working capital or the definition of working capital. And to illustrate, I've got actual data from Hewlett Packard, that's ticker HPQ, that I pulled from the most recent quarterly filing, that would be the 10Q, for the three month period ending April 30th, 2010. Although this is from the balance sheet, so keep in mind, these are not flows like from the income statement, rather they are point in time account balances really on that end of day or end of that period, April 30th point in time. So I also have it for comparison's sake going back to the end of the prior quarter, January 31st, 2010. So we have point in time three months prior and then most recent point in time for the account balances. Then we have current assets here in the upper panel, current liabilities in the lower panel. I like to think of this sometimes as left-hand side of the balance sheet and then this as right-hand side of the balance sheet. But it's all current, both current assets and liability. Current is generally those accounts that are either going to be converted into cash within one year or paid within one year, or if not within one year, one operating cycle. So for current assets, we have cash and cash equivalents, most recently here of about 14.1 billion, the units here are in millions. So cash and cash equivalents and then short-term investments, which for analytically, we might just lump that into the same account. These are ordered generally in terms of greater liquidity at the top. So the most liquid instrument is cash. Hewlett Packard, 14.1 in cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments. And then next, a key current asset account accounts receivable. So this is Hewlett Packard has sold products to its customers, but instead of collecting cash immediately on shipping or on receipt of the product, they have sold the product on credit terms. So the account receivable here is about 14.7, 14.8 billion. Then we have Hewlett Packard's inventory, which depends on their approach to accounting for inventory, but it's going to be a function of their purchases during the period and cost of goods sold during the period. And then finally, I collapsed several other current asset accounts just into one big other. So we have here the current side of the left hand side of the balance sheet, current assets, and they roll up to about 51.7 billion for Hewlett Packard as a point in time measure at the end of the most recent quarter. And now if we go over to the right hand side of the balance sheet, then current liabilities, we've got again ordered rough sequenced approximately in order of liquidity. So that's the shortest term obligations first, notes and short term borrowings. These are, these are either going to be short term notes or the current portion of long term debt. In their case, it's almost about $4 billion. And then the next key account, notice I bolded this accounts payable, sort of the analog to accounts receivable. In, the, in this case, this is going to be the amount that Hewlett Packard owes to its suppliers. So that would be things it purchased in order to make its product. So accounts payable in their case, about 13.35 or 13.4 billion in accounts payable. And then again, another line item where I collapsed several other miscellaneous liability accounts into other current liabilities. So in this case, to keep it simple, then only the three accounts, we summarize them and we get total current liabilities of about 42.2 billion for Hewlett Packard. Now we can look at the two popular definitions of working capital. And the first is the most straightforward one. And it's really the solvency perspective. And so you can see here, it is just total current assets minus total current liabilities. That's for the previous period. Here it is for the most recent period. Working capital, total current assets minus total current liabilities equals about 9.4 billion. And so that is the solvency perspective that includes the cash account. Now from an analytical perspective or if we're doing a valuation, we want to exclude the cash so this is working capital excluding cash. And then you'll see right here, most recently, negative 4.7 billion, because this definition excludes this cash account, this large cash account of 14.1 billion. 
So analytically, not from the solvency perspective, but from the valuation perspective, we exclude the cash because we like to assess how much cash the working capital, that is to say the capital that's funding the ongoing operations of the business is consuming. Does it need cash? Does it throw off cash? And here, the negative 2.7 is dropping down to negative 4.7 billion, such that our change in the working capital excluding cash is a negative almost 2 billion. Now here's the confusing part. That does not imply that cash is being used, but rather that cash is being created. So if we go back up to current assets, here's accounts receivable. Notice it increased from 4.5 to 4.7. That increase in accounts receivable is a use of cash. That is to say, product has been sold where we haven't collected cash yet. Inventory dropped. That is a source of cash. So increases in the current, account, current asset accounts imply uses of cash. With liabilities, it's the other way around. So our accounts payable here went from 13.5 down to 3.5. And, and that is a use of cash. In other words, we've paid off some of those accounts payable. So our working capital, excluding the cash here, went down or dropped by almost two billion. And it's not really due to our accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable account, but rather the, the primary expla explanation for that is right here in the notes and short-term borrowings. Notice it jumped from 1.8 to almost four, or increased by two billion. And if we think about it, this represents short-term borrowing, which would be a source of cash for us. So this negative, this drop in working capital that excludes cash is consistent with here an increase in the current liability, which is a source of cash for us. Finally, current ratio is one of the po one popular ratio here so it's sort of another way to express this that general working capital here including cash was current assets minus current liabilities well we could also just take the ratio of those same numbers total current assets divided by total current liabilities gives us the so-called current ratio of 1.3 so a couple of different defin definitions of working capital a, a difficult and subtle point here in regard to the uses and sources of cash and what the change here in working capital excluding cash means for us. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.